today's video uh, is a little bit different. You see, the other day I was recording a video and I'd recorded the first few bits to camera and then something went horribly wrong with uh, the recordings. To this day, I don't quite know what had happened. Uh, anyway, so today's video is a little bit more of a, a sort of a, a hybrid. Um, you'll, you'll see what I managed to retrieve uh, of that shoot and I'll explain my day a little bit in between. You join me on this first clip of the day as I arrive at my location. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I've come to the Slimbridge Wildfire Trust. Now, I did say I wouldn't make another uh, animal photography video until uh, I could test out the 100 to 400 lens. Well, here it is. It's a bit of a beast. Um, this is the first time I've ever done uh, sort of this, this sort of bird photography, birding, I think a lot of people call it. Um, and my initial impression of it is you know what? The stabilisation on this lens is absolutely amazing. I, I can't fault it at all. It's absolutely uh, fantastic. We've seen some flamingos, we've seen some swans, we've seen some geese, perhaps? Gooses? I don't know what the plural of geese is. Um, no, geese is the plural, isn't it? Never mind. Uh, and, and so far, what I'm finding with the lens is it's not as heavy as I thought it would be. I thought it'd be really heavy. I don't have a tripod with me today, so I'm hand holding absolutely everything. And um, the stabilization is just so good. I, I can't imagine why I would need a tripod for this sort of stuff. Now, the, the birds so far, they haven't been flying yet. You can do flying birds, but I haven't got that far yet. So I've tried a, a range of different things on the camera from wide tracking to uh, to zone to single point. Single point I'm getting a better hit rate with, I think, but that only really works on um, animals that are that are, are slower. Um, I've set my um, shutter speed to 500 at a minimum. And if I'm going for shooting uh, flying birds, it'd be sort of 1200 plus. Uh, my um, aperture I've set to eight and uh, the ISO, I'm letting the camera sort that out for me, which means of course I might get some odd shots, but you never know. Um, I'm going to just keep going from here on in and, and uh, maybe sort of show you some of the shots that I get in the voiceover. These were the first few shots I got around the park. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to hold the camera or get steady shots, but I needn't have been. The combination of the lens and the camera did a phenomenal job. More often than not, the camera would nail the eye of the animal, even though there's no animal eye tracking on the X-T3. And even when you zoom all the way into the photos, the images are pin sharp. So let's talk a little bit about the lens in question. Now it is the Fuji 100 to 400 millimeter lens. And if you're doing wildlife uh, on the Fuji X series, really it's the only lens uh, that gives you that sort of reach. There are rumors uh, at the moment about their releasing a, a lens that will go up to 300 mil, which likely will be a lighter option. Uh, but right now, if you want to do wildlife and you want that, uh, that reach, that 400 mil reach, then this is really the only lens uh, that you can get. Now, as I mentioned in the clip, it's actually an awful lot lighter than I expected. And I suspect that possibly has to do uh, with uh, the fact that it was built for an APS-C camera. A lot of the wildlife lenses, especially if the, the Sigma and Tamron uh, lenses and they're built uh, so that they will fit either a full frame camera or an APS-C camera. Uh, and so because of that, they have to be uh, as big as they would need to be for a full frame camera. With Fuji, they are developing lenses that are specifically for uh, the APS-C X series. And that means, I think that that means it's a, a little bit uh, smaller, uh, still incredibly well put together, but a little bit lighter as well. And that makes a big difference if you're trying to cut down on the amount of weight that you need to carry, especially because of course, mirrorless cameras are a lot lighter as well. Certainly the construction is every bit as good as any of the other lenses that you might get. First of all, at this price point, and secondly, at this sort of 
zoom range. Uh, you've got handy buttons on the side where you can switch between um, uh, auto aperture or manual aperture, uh, between image stabilization being on or off. But if you've bought any XF lenses before, and the chances are you probably have, you'll expect those things as standard. What it's also got is this handy switch on the side uh, that takes it from being, uh, uh, the, the, from focusing on the full range uh, throughout the lens into only focusing on objects that are five meters away or more. And that means that when you're doing something like birds in flight or uh, you're focusing on things that are a lot further in the distance but still moving relatively quickly, it actually focuses an awful lot quicker. Now this lens focuses really quickly. As far as I was concerned, it focused dead quickly anyway. And that's partly because of the construction of the lens. So it did a really good job uh, 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 anyway. Uh, it's super quiet. And of course the camera, when you let the, the shutter off, that's super quiet as well. Uh, but back at the wildlife park, I was actually suffering a little bit from the sun. I've uh, just come back from what was a rather good uh, hide where there were herons and cranes and things and it was the first time that I've actually seen uh, some birds in flight that I could try but unfortunately um, because of the situation that they were in and because they were a long way off uh, I couldn't get anything. Now the light today is is pretty harsh. We're here around about lunchtime and actually um, it's not ideal. It really would have been good to be able to come here early in the morning or later on in the evening but they're just not not open. So um, I, I've got what I can. Uh, and I've tried different um, shooting modes. I did try using uh, continuous uh, IS mode and using shooting only IS mode and apparently uh, that makes a big difference when you're taking wildlife. Well I'll find out when I take it back into the computer because I'll be able to see the difference between different shots. I have heard that if you use continuous only shooting mode um, when you're doing wildlife then you often get less sharp images, not necessarily blurred images, but images that aren't as pin sharp as they should be. We'll see how it turns out. I would really love to get some birds in flight. I haven't really seen any yet. Um, and, and again, lighting is all wrong, so we're getting these really, really harsh shadows. You can probably see it on my face right now, because it's a similar uh, problem, uh, problem there. Um, the lens, however, I'm incredibly incredibly pleased with. Uh, what I am getting from it when I've reviewed a few pictures is absolute pin sharpness. Um, the stabilization, I keep mentioning this, but it, it really has shocked me today how good that stabilization is. And when you're out at, at um, uh, sort of 400 mil, you need that. Uh, not only that, if you're out at 400 mil, it's it's a weight as well, so you kind of have to be a little bit uh, a little bit fitter to carry this. I might have to start doing some exercise just to build up the hands that I need to use to carry this lens. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, anyway, I, I don't know where we're going next, but we'll be on to the next thing uh, in a moment. But here's some pictures that I've just got. Despite the sun, I actually got several good images from that location. In fact, it turned out to be the best part of the day, with this shot of a heron being the best of the images. It's really a shame that he wasn't facing the camera, but you can't have everything, of course. The camera did a superb job of keeping the focus on the targets. I only found I needed to turn continuous IS off if I was taking fast moving targets but it was at this location that the reach of the lens started to become a bit of an issue, as the birds were a lot further away. Now the reach problem would have been solved if I'd had a 1.4 times converter, which is available for that particular lens. They have two converters available, the 1.4 and the two times. Um, I have subsequently got a 1.4 converter, and it takes your lens from an effective focal range of 400 mil to 560 mil. So that's a lot more like the kind of, um, the, the sort of 600 mil lenses that you get with, with Tamron, with, with Sigma, uh, and of course, uh, with the sort of Nikon Canon own brand lenses as well to do wildlife. Now you do lose a stop of light when you're using that lens, but to me, I didn't think that that was 
all that important. You see, the, the, the lens could already be said to be slow at 5.6 at, at 400 mil, but most people stop that down anyway to f8 to f9, so I'm not sure that that is as big a problem as you might make out. Does that mean you get uh, uh, slightly closer to the subjects? Yes, it does. And that could be uh, the, the reason why you'd want to go for this 1.4 uh, converter. Uh, maybe not the two. The two, which is also available, you lose two stops of light on. And I have heard it said that it slows that the focusing down uh, quite significantly uh, as well. Uh, most wildlife zoom lenses uh, do fall into that sort of same uh, aperture range um, as as the the uh, the 100 to 400, even with uh, the teleconverter on. So it's not outside the realms of usable at all. It's not so slow uh, that it's a, a deal breaker. Uh, but I've seen a lot of people using that 1.4 for teleconverter to do wildlife, specifically doing birds in flight as well. Um, so, you know, I, I thought at the time that I wouldn't need it. I think now looking back on it, that I might have benefited from having it at least at that part uh, of the day. And I'd have liked to have been able to try this out to see what I could have got with it. After lunch, we started back through the park. Since this was a little later in the year, there weren't the same birds that we might have seen even a few weeks earlier, but we made the most of what was there, plenty of ducks and swans took our attention, and although I didn't get many images at this point, the lens was still performing incredibly well. It was at this point that I really started feeling comfortable with the wide tracking as well, enough to leave it on in that mode for the rest of the trip. Now, I did want to mention tracking as well. Um, on the Fuji, there are two settings that really deal uh, with the tracking. Uh, firstly, there's the uh, type of focus point that you're using. So you'll have either single or uh, zone or wide. Um, and for me, I put the, the camera into wide tracking for, for most of the shoot that day. And it did incredibly uh, well for me, I, I do have to say. But there's also a P, uh, AFC uh, custom setting, so auto focus something or other and it's worth uh, getting to know those a little bit because depending on um, what you're shooting will depend on what setting that you want to use on this. For birds in flight, for the sorts of animals that I was taking today, I use setting two which is the ignoring obstacles setting and that actually seemed to work incredibly well although I did set a custom setting by the end of the day uh, that I think worked just a little bit better and at some point I might go over that but until I've played with it enough and to, to make sure that it actually is better and it wasn't just me on the day thinking that it was better, then I'm going to leave that with you for now. Um, because it is worth playing around with these things. It's worth finding out what works for you. Um, and then after, after we'd uh, come back from this, after we'd had lunch, uh, then uh, we were lucky enough to find a, a bench overlooking a lake which had a lot of birds in the water. And uh, we were just able to sit there and, and watch them for as long as we'd wanted. So that's what we did. And it was there that I got probably the best shot of the day. There were some great opportunities to take shots at this location. I did like these geese swimming in formation and it's amazing how they've just got used to people. My favourite image of the day, however, was of this swan, trying to pick up a bit of material from the side of the lake, which was obviously buried too deep into the actual lake to pull it up. It was a great experience spending time with these birds, and one that I'll have to do at a better time of the year. But what about the lens? Well, if you have a Fuji X camera, this really is your only opportunity to get something for wildlife that works with your autofocus system. The combination of the two actually, it's much easier to use than I thought, and I was incredibly pleased with the results I got as well. All in all, I would recommend this lens. In fact, I was so impressed with it that I've picked one up myself with the 1.4 times teleconverter as well. So expect to see some more videos with this lens in the future. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and sorry if it's been a little disjointed. Next week, I will take the same lens around the West Midlands Safari Park to see if it holds up against my old 18 to 300 mil. 
Until then, thanks very much for watching, and if you'd like to support the channel, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and the all notifications option. Also, if you're a really kind person, please do share this with your friends. Until next week, don't forget, keep taking those pictures.